Welcome to Obey Your Strengths with Gallup Certified Strengths Coach, Kathy Kirsten. Our guest today is Jennifer Seuss. Jennifer is a marriage and family therapist in San Antonio. She specializes in couples and family therapy, trauma and grief, and managing anxiety and depression without medication. She utilizes StrengthsFinder in her practice for almost a decade now, and I'm thrilled to have her as a guest to share her stories with us. You may recognize her last name because her husband, Ron Seuss, was featured in season one of Obey Your Strengths, and we have a long history of working together and sharing our strengths passions. So welcome to the show, Jen. Thank you. Happy to be here. I'm glad that you're here. And I can't wait to dive in. You know, you and I have had lunch together that have, have turned into the conversation we're about to put on on record for our podcast. Uh-huh. <laughs> we'll censor it a little bit. But yes, yeah. we will. We will <laughs> censor it a little bit. But I can't wait to really get into some of the wisdom that you've shared with me through the years about how strengths has added to couples' lives and family lives and work lives, and I think you have so much to offer, so thanks in advance for sharing your wisdom. You're welcome. All right, well, we're going to start out this show like we do every one. Can you tell me your top five and how they manifest themselves in you? Yes, I can do that. Uh, This was actually an interesting exercise for me when you told me that I had to go get my report and look and them, up. them up what you don't have them memorized <laughs> well here's why I never worked at Rackspace I never worked anywhere where they used it in the way where everybody has it posted all over the place uh. and when I learned about strengths I learned about strengths in groups so I only knew my top group which was about 10 or 12 and I'd never thought about them in order, right? Got it. So I had to go look at my report and okay. send that to you. That makes total sense. And I'm sure there's other listeners out there that yeah. probably like that yeah. totally makes sense. Okay. So technically my top five are intellection, input, achiever, learner, and deliberative. Wow. You bring some heavy hitting strategic thinking themes. Okay. <laughs> Tell us how they manifest themselves in you. So intellection is the thing that makes my husband ask me, is it time to think about that yet? Right? When he, <laughs> <laughs> when he wants to plan something or make a decision about something or talk through something, he knows that I will not be capable of doing it, literally, unless I have mapped out time and checked that off my list to do the thinking part, like as if it's an actual executable task, wow. right? Because to me, it is. Like, mm-hmm. it feels that way. Um, so I have to think about things and I have to have time to think. Uh, It makes me terrible at meditation and it also makes me a bit of an insomniac. Um, That just constant buzzing in my own brain about something is all, it's always there. You know, people you ask, what are you thinking about? And some people will say, nothing. I have no point of reference for that whatsoever. (laughs) That never happens to (laughs) you? I do not understand that. Um, So that's an election. Um, Input, oh gosh, input means that uh, you could have any need right now and I could meet it with what's in my garage and my car console easily. Um, There's just all the things that you could ever need stashed away somewhere. I believe you. Yeah, much to my husband's uh, chagrin. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Because of him, it is contained in those two places. I think if it weren't for him, it would be like everywhere. Um, yeah, so I have a hard time getting rid of books, and uh, I collect, uh, I do collect a couple of things, uh, cake stands and Christmas ornaments, crystal really? Christmas ornaments. I didn't know that about you. Yeah, but cool. that's about it. I've, you know, I've tried to, over the years, he's worn me down and gotten rid of all my things, and so it's getting smaller. Um, achiever, uh, achiever sounds like everybody else that's been on here that has had achiever. <laughs> lists, 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 lots of lists. Uh, every day starts at, at zero. Mm-hmm. Um, no weekends, no breaks, no off time. That's not really true anymore because I've gotten, I've gotten good at it and learned to manage it so mm-hmm. that I don't burn out. But um, you know, the urge is still there to, yeah. to power through and just work all the time. Learner, uh, a learner drives what you just said before we started, which I've had a million crazy different jobs, and I think learner's mm-hmm. part of that. Always interested in what's the you know, next thing. If you looked at the books that I read, it would be, it would feel really random, you know, just all over the place. 
and I can do the the internet wormhole thing mm-hmm. pretty easily, right? Mm-hmm. My learner kicks off and it's click, 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 click. And an hour later, I'm like, where, how am I here? What is this? Why, <laughs> why am I reading about some tribe in the middle of like, you know, whatever, right? <laughs> some crazy thing. Right. Um, and deliberative, oh boy. Um, I'll talk about deliberative, like deliberative would like to be talked about, which is what's wrong with it. <laughs> um, I can walk into a room of a thousand perfect things and see the three things that are not correct. Mm -hmm. Um, And I can't, you know, I can't turn that off. It just, I I notice those kinds of things and always looking for the problem, always looking for the thing that needs to be managed or avoided or that one has earned me the name at home of parade rain. Really? Uh I haven't heard that label before. Parade Parade rain. (laughs) Because my deliberative... Because you're raining on everyone's parade. I can ruin anything with my... (laughs) How I notice what's wrong. That's so funny. That's... I I would probably think that my maximizer turned up really high could be that same Uh exact thing. Yeah, same effect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Okay. You know... The input achiever learner, from what I know about you, does not surprise me at all. The intellection does not surprise me. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you're super smart. <laughs> okay, that's just a short label. <laughs> you are an intellectual. That's easy to see. But the mm-hmm. deliberative did surprise me whenever I, I found out that you had that on your top five because I didn't see it coming. Yeah. Um, it, but, you know, deliberative tends to be more of a quiet strength mm-hmm. that is internal to folks. Mm-hmm. And you wouldn't know it unless... You really, really knew them very well. And I have done, I mean, when we talk about, and I'm sure we'll get into this, but when we talk about the shadow sides of strengths and having to learn how to manage those and get sophisticated about that, deliberative has been one of the big ones in that for me. Because while it makes me pretty good at what I do for a living and it's made me good at a lot of my jobs, it's a terrible, terrible thing to just have on 10 all the time if you're trying to parent or be in a relationship. Mm. So I have had to learn how to get a dial on that one and and manage it pretty. Ah, uh, let's talk about yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're going to talk about that today. That is on the list of things uh-huh, to talk yes. about. Yeah. Awesome. Well, welcome again to Obey Your Strengths. <laughs> season two it's so exciting you're here we talked about having you on in season one and now you're here and it feels great so let's talk about how we met each other okay so we met when you were teaching strengths for couples at Rackspace and so Mm -hmm. to give our listeners some context Ron Seuss and I were members of the engagement team and Ron Mm -hmm. and you had designed the course Mm -hmm. strengths for couples so Ron was the certified strengths coach you brought the intellectual element <laughs> the certified He's gonna love that. marriage and family element. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Ron. But, you know, I, I thought it was a perfect partnership mm-hmm. between you mm-hmm. and him because he was the energetic racker who would, you know, get be the not Jen. Uh-huh. Don't take this the wrong way, but oh. he brings the energy fun part. Oh, he absolutely does. And you bring yeah, the I'm grounding. parade brain. <laughs> You brought the grounding, yes. realistic, intellectual side that yes. that made everyone feel who went through the course like they really came away with not just having an entertaining evening, but a, an evening that gave them a framework of how to uh, improve the relationship um, moving forward through strengths and also some of the other tools that you gave them in mm-hmm. that class. So let's mm-hmm. talk about that class a little bit because sure. most folks, when we, whenever I tell them all the stuff that we did at Rackspace and strengths for couples was one of the cherry on top type mm-hmm. of things, mm-hmm. yeah. they're like, wow, that is so cool. Um, so if we let's talk about some components of what that was. Sure. That class came out of, um, a, I think, a couple of different ways. You know, Ron started at Rackspace and was introduced to strengths. And of course, because of what I do, I've been trained in a lot of different personality assessments and frameworks. And so I'm always interested in hello, learner input. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to always be gathering more. Um, And so I, you know, logged on and took the assessment myself and just dove into that. And we were talking about it a lot. You know, it would come up uh, at home a lot. And as I think happens with strengths, when you you know, start paying attention to them and reading and learning about it, you start seeing them everywhere, like you right. know, wherever you are in all of your conversations. So it was inevitable that I was going to be sitting in session and 
have a light bulb moment with a client that, wait a second, this is a strength problem. Like, you know, and that's kind of how it started. Um, So from there, I started trying to figure out how to, you know, transfer that information and knowledge uh, to my couples that I was working with. And through the conversations I was having with Ron about that at home, he started saying, you know what happens every time I teach a class, you know, somewhere people come up to me afterwards and say, how can I get my wife or my significant other to take this so I can figure out what's wrong with them? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Such a strength space uh, focus. (laughs) What's wrong with them? Uh, What's wrong with them? Um, And he said, you know, this would be like the perfect solution to that like we could talk about strengths in the context of you know what people are actually asking for Uh, so I took some of the principles that I use that are very fundamental to marriage therapy it's John Gottman's work which anybody who knows anything about marriage therapy knows he's kind of the hallmark researcher and all the good data is his and he's written you know one million books Mm -hmm. and um, it's real accessible. It's very, it's easy to operationalize. Um, so we basically just said, how can we use strengths as a tool to give people these principles that he talks about? And we sat down. Uh, we actually spent a weekend afternoon, I think, in the lobby of the Valencia Hotel or somewhere downtown. <laughs> the perfect ideation place. Yes. And we hammered out the curriculum for the class in an afternoon and there it was. So. Okay, so give me the facts of the class. How long was that class? It was about a three-hour class, okay. and we did dinner and beer and wine. Mm-hmm. We tried to have it a little bit like date night slash Ron would say, you're here for dinner and a show. Mm-hmm. Um, he would do the intro, which was real level setting intro to strengths, just kind of a quick 30 minutes about you know what are strengths, where do they come from, what's our intention behind using them. Um, then I would do some introduction to I called it sort of marriage 101, relationship 101 stuff, um, which is based in attachment theory and, you know, how we're wired as people and what the physiology of that is. Uh, And then we would go into about three or four, I think, examples of how you could use your knowledge about strengths to leverage those principles to improve your connection. Mm -hmm. Um, Small groups, we tried to keep it, you know, pretty small so that they could have conversations at the tables and, you know, get to know each other and have fun with it. And um, the end of three hours, everybody was laughing and no one ever got divorced because of it <laughs> that we know <laughs> that of. we know of. <laughs> <laughs> well, the activity that we did during that class, my husband mm-hmm. and I took the class. Yes, and it was yes. fantastic. The Amazing Race activity. Am I rem- remembering that name mm-hmm. right? Was it The mm-hmm. Amazing Race? Yeah, it was a takeoff on that show, that TV show at the time. Yes. And you had to have a, you had to choose your mission mm-hmm. and then figure out how to leverage your your strengths leverage to your to strengths the destination, to get right? the yeah leverage your strengths as a team right instead yes. of just as an individual like as a couple yes yeah. I have to be totally honest my husband even though I was a strengths coach for years at Rackspace at that mm-hmm. point when we took that class and he had his top five I have his top five well I guess that's really the most thing I had his top five he had <laughs> right. taken the, the assessment and handed me his top five Here and really didn't pay yeah. much attention to it uh <laughs> Because we are the opposites attract kind of people. Oh, yes. Uh, he had never read through his description and thought about them in relationship to me, the way I had been doing for years oh, mm-hmm, uh-huh. towards him. So it was the aha moment for him. Mm. And the Gottman stuff for me was the light bulb. You know, that was mm-hmm. the input learner the new, stuff for me. Yeah. I have input learner too in my top five. So I was like, ooh. And then strategic maximizer comes in going like, ooh, we're going to like maximize our relationship. Yes. Right. Make uh, it the greatest marriage ever. Yes, we're going to be the ever. best. No matter how... <laughs> great we already are we could always be a little bit better uh but it was a a night to remember right and and thinking about where we were going to go and how we were going to do it in this amazing race scenario and it was a lot of fun Jen. yeah it was, it was really, fun it was a, really it was a fun thing. class and you're right all the fun stuff is always Ron's. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ron adds to it, yeah. uh, but you bring you bring the grounding piece, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So it was great. And you know what's fun? And I think Ron and I talked about this uh, earlier in this podcast series, but I believe, I think we did, but this was a class and 
an extracurricular class at Rackspace, you know, that was above and beyond what people had to do for their jobs. Mm -hmm. And it was the most popular. Mm -hmm. So we would let people know that signups were happening on a certain date, opening at a certain time, and it would sell out immediately. And there would be Mm -hmm. a waiting list for other people because we could only accommodate like 25 people per. Yeah, I think there was 30. It was 15 15 couples, couples, right? Yeah, that's right. 15 couples each month one night a month and it was a a spectacular success and and matter of fact word got out beyond rack space and you guys kind of went on a little road show for a while right we we did it a couple of other places there were some churches that wanted to have that be you know Mm -hmm. part of their life group program and there was a consulting company in houston that hosted um, an evening one night for some of their strengths clients and had us come in and do it you know we did we did it a few other places but more wildly successful at Rackspace than I think we could have. We certainly didn't know what it was going to turn into when we started. It was just this fun idea. And let's see what happens. Right. Um, yeah. It was a really, really fun class to teach. Awesome. So. Well, yeah, it was really fun to take. And it started, it helped us fan the flame of the strengths fire outside the walls of Rackspace. That's for sure. Because mm-hmm. many folks who would come to Rackspace uh, and do it with their spouse or their significant other would then want to take strengths to their workplace. And that was what was really neat is to watch this whole thing grow. Um, so you use Strengths Finder in your practice, like you mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. Tell me, what is the compelling reason for you to ask some of your clients to take the Strengths Finder? I think the probably the quality about Strengths Finder that is um, makes it the most accessible for the work that I do is couples will um, find themselves stuck in a particular communication dynamic or in a particular conflict that they're having. They get so defensive and emotional about that, the, you know, the actual dynamic, um, that it becomes really difficult for them to even have a productive conversation about it, right? And so part of my work always with people is to try to figure out how to create a safe space so that people can not be so defensive and not be so quick to jump to that flooded, um, you know, I can't listen to you, I can't hear you place. And the thing that strengths does is that when you get the education and you allow yourself to hear the, the labels and the descriptions and you realize, oh, this is like a thing, like there's an assessment for this, there's a name for that kind of way to see the world it's not personal. They're not doing this thing that I think they're doing to be a jerk. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's just who they are. And so strengths was useful to me sometimes to really help detangle people from their own stuckness in the emotional part of it, because you could sort of step away, have an intellectual perspective on what was happening, and people could choose to reframe their conversation or, you know, whatever that kind of dynamic that they'd been stuck in for a while in a way that wasn't, it wasn't personal. Um, It it really helps desensitize uh, people. That's where it first came up. I've used it for lots of other things since then, but that was the initial, um, I guess, idea or or way that it was a really useful tool for me. Um, I remember, I remember one of the very early couples and it seemed like they would come in every week and they thought they had a new problem. Like they thought they'd had a new fight. Like, oh, last week it was about money and this week it's about this. And they were sort of building this narrative about their relationship that they just couldn't talk about anything. Everything turned into a fight. Like, we can't even talk about anything. And they were so stuck on the fact that every single conversation topic would become an issue that they couldn't get through, that they couldn't recognize the dynamic that was actually happening. It wasn't about the subject matter. It was about the way in which they were communicating, and it was 100% strengths based. The way they were each approaching a problem, whatever the problem was, it didn't matter what the problem was. And so I think for me, it was like, oh, this is a really great way to help them stop that very negative narrative that they're on the verge of developing about their relationship to say, no, it's not, it's not that. It's not that you guys can't talk about anything without fighting. It's that you just come at this in such a way that you fall into that pattern again. Um, he had focus very high, and so everything, every conversation was about how it pertained to where he was trying to go, right? The long-term focus was very low for her. She was much more 
and she had restorative or something something mm-hmm. else that the, just the way that she came at a problem they just never felt like they were seeing things the same way so walking them through that having them take the assessment putting some language around that stuff for them so that they could talk about it from a more intellectual place helped them get to the vulnerable emotions instead of the angry Mm -hmm. (laughs) emotions. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, they were able to work through things and and realize that they actually could come to resolution on things. They weren't weren't in a stalemate over everything. Um, So that's kind of how it started, and then it grew from there. Because the more I used it, of course, the more I realized it had lots of – there was lots of opportunity for it. I see that in teams as well, Mm -hmm. right, that – Equipping them with the knowledge of each other's talent lens or their strength lens does disarm people, Mm -hmm. and it makes Mm -hmm. it a little bit more of a safe place. I was just with a team uh, a couple of weeks ago, and the the leader of the team has command in his top five. Mm -hmm. And stakes are high this year in 2019 for this team. They have to grow by uh, an obscene percentage. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. so that's why they were having an offsite with Kathy Kirsten, Mm -hmm. right, Mm -hmm. in January. So let's let's make sure that we get our ducks in a row before we have to fly this plane. And, you know, his command, sometimes when in the heat of the moment, he becomes so direct and so um, directive that he was shutting people down. Mm -hmm. And then we talked about command and how his command is so unemotional, right? Yeah. That he can he yeah. can have those conflicts in the, the team meeting and then walk out and he can say, okay, guys, let's go have lunch together. Or, okay, guys, like, I'm not mad at you. I'm not frustrated. Like, I was right. arguing with you. We were in conflict. Um, I was challenging you. Mm-hmm. I was... I was uh, using some social courage to help the team elevate to the expectations mm-hmm. I'm needing from you but it's not a personal thing and some members of the team are reading it based on their own strength lens of course yeah right that it was oh he's so disappointed in us Mm -hmm. and you know he's um surrounded by a group of people with responsibility in their top five oh boy so they read between the lines yeah and they take it all on right yeah so he's he's feeling disappointment in us that we haven't Mm -hmm. um reached expectations, Mm -hmm. matched his expectations, and then plus some, because responsibility took on so much more. So when we saw all this in the black and white of StrengthsFinder language, everybody kind of took a a Mm -hmm. breath of fresh air, Mm -hmm. going, okay, it's not as bad as we were thinking. I take on too much. He dishes it out pretty strongly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's just an example from my world. of Very similar, though. I have people in my office say all the time, this is such a relief. It's such a relief to have this language around it. It's such a relief to know that this is just a thing. Like it's just, you know, just like you're left-handed or just like you're, I mean, it's, you know, it's not something that we're intentionally doing on purpose and we can learn about it and get sophisticated about it and manage it. Yeah, right. I did ask my husband for for some uh, permission last night because (laughs) we are more of the sophisticated type this day and age. We've been married Uh for 14 years now, Jen. And, um... We had an epic strengths-based argument. <laughs> I call it strengths-based conflict. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> recently, about planting some sod in our grass. Oh, very so. high stakes <laughs> conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to share, like, this is an example of where we, and, and then I want you to follow up with, mm-hmm. Kathy, this is how you should really be using this. <laughs> but the story around this goes that we were wanting to put some sod some grass in our backyard because we were going to put our house on the market and uh travis my husband's idea of that means on saturday morning we go pick up the pallet of grass Mm -hmm. and by the way i should tell everyone his top five strengths context adaptability achiever relator belief okay Mm -hmm. okay kathy kirsten is strategic input learner belief and maximizer we share belief belief yeah but pretty much he's like, go with the flow unless it's something he wants to get done. Then he really wants to just get it done. Yeah. And Kathy's like, let's research and think about it mm-hmm. and make the best plan. And yeah. then we're going to work the plan. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to improve the plan and do it all over again. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so this this project went leading up to Saturday. You know, I YouTubed. YouTubed. Is that a word? Is that a, yeah, can I use that as now. a verb? <laughs> That's awesome. I looked up a few youtube diy videos about planting sod and learned a couple of best practices that i 
wanted to follow. Of course. Because we were spending a couple of hundred dollars on sod. Um, his idea was to just go get the sod, scrape off the old stuff, mm-hmm. lay down the new stuff, and then be done by 4 p.m. to watch the Football. Aggies play. Yeah. Right? Um, so, <laughs> yeah. About halfway through... I'm, he, I'm working and we're sweaty and it's awful. You know, and I'm working through and I'm like, wait a minute, we've scraped all the stuff off. Where's the fertilizer that we're supposed to lay underneath the sod? And he's looking at me like, there's no fertilizer. We're laying the sod. And I said, wait, wait, no, it's a best practice. <laughs> and you can imagine <laughs> our um, uh-huh. conflict. And then also, mm-hmm. I'm then I start communicating that I need to see the end goal. And I realize my strategic has come to the forefront now right. of like, I don't understand really what this is going to end up and look like. So you need to help me understand. And he's looking at me like, Kathy, just get it done. Just I just want this over yes, with. I just want yeah. like he he's the kind of person of like brute force gets a lot done. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing that I love about that man. Mm-hmm. Right. Like that man can get stuff done in a way that, you know, I can't even begin. And so yeah, we're literally having a strength space argument over grass. And I'm literally saying, my strategic needs to know. And he's like, my achiever <laughs> needs to get you, like, just needs to get this done, Kathy. I don't want to overthink it. You know, and I'm like, oh, yeah. you're accusing my input learner about the YouTube video. Like, can you imagine this video? <laughs> I can. This, I can. <laughs> it's super fun. I was thinking my neighbors probably think we are some <laughs> psycho, psychology <laughs> fighter like because we were we weren't yelling at each other but we were a little bit sweaty and a little bit you know yeah. irritated by mm-hmm. noon yeah. in the fall of, of texas right where it's not exactly cool no um anyway so that was my uh, it, it makes example. me think about what i used to say to ron whenever he would do something that was really irritating to me i decided that instead of telling him that it was irritating i would be curious instead of judgmental which is of course taking my own medicine right and i would say hmm I wonder what strength it is that makes you do that. Oh, <laughs> that's a great line. Oh, yeah. No, it starts a fight, too. But <laughs> it's slightly passive aggressive. But... <laughs> but in my head, I was like, it's nicer than what I want to say. So, um, yeah, we do. We do the strength fighting, too. So. Oh. <laughs> OK, how should we utilize some of this strengths language you know, run us through, you know, some of the tools or some best practices for us. Well, I think if we're going to talk about conflict, um, let's, uh, first of all, I like to step way back from conflict and I, I have context in my talk 10, so okay. I have to do that too. Um, conflict is not bad. I think a lot of people, especially in their relationships, have this mythology, this negative mythology about conflict that we want to avoid it, we want to solve it, we want to not engage in it if we possibly can get away with that. And some people are hardwired for that, maybe. Yes. Harmony. Yes, absolutely. Right. right. Okay. And I professionally come at that from a very different place. Okay. I have a I place a high value on conflict. I believe we can't avoid it. And I think that when conflict is done well, it's highly productive and it gets us to a deeper level of intimacy and connection in the relationship. Um, so, and by intimacy, I don't mean code for sex. I mean, capital I. Right. <laughs> intimacy. Right. The intimacy that can exist between coworkers, right. teens. Any kind of deep relationship that yes. you can be vulnerable and it's safe. Um, intellectual, physical, emotional, like the, all the whole big thing. Okay. So that definition of intimacy, which I think is the most useful one, is self-confrontation in the presence of another. Okay, you have to unpack that for right, me. I'm going to. Okay. <laughs> so self-confrontation with a witness. That What that means is that I'm going to have a conversation with myself about myself, like a mirror conversation, right, in front of someone else. I'm going to let them listen to that. And that conversation is going to be the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's not, it's going to be what I worry about, my successes, my fears, the things I think I'll never accomplish, what keeps me up at night, what I think I'm a rock star at, right? All those things, the truth. And you get to see that, right? That's the holy grail of, of intimacy, is getting to that kind of place. 
obviously that relationship has to be pretty safe and you have to practice at that a lot. And uh, as scary and vulnerable as the mirror conversation role feels in that particular scenario, the witness chair is no picnic either, right? Because you are supposed to just witness, which means you try not to get defensive. You try not to tell the person why they shouldn't feel the way that they feel, talk them out of how they feel, insert yourself in some way that you're going to solve that or change that or fix that for them. It really is truly, I'm going to witness this process that you're going through, this information that you're sharing for the sole purpose of just knowing you, just Mm -hmm. so that you feel seen, heard, understood. That's it. Neither role is particularly easy to do, right? Especially in these relationships with people that we really care about and have all of these charged emotions about. So if that's the goal, the the so to, holy grail, so to speak, of, of relationship work is getting to that safe place where intimacy can happen, then conflict is really just the other side of that coin, right? I mean, you think about what is conflict. I think one thing, you think another thing, and we're butting heads about that. We can do that in a very ugly way that's destructive to the safety of our relationship, or we can figure out a way to have conflict just be another version of that intimacy conversation. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to listen to why you think the sky is purple, even though I'm pretty sure the sky is green. And I'm going to just try to understand what it must be like to live in a world where the sky is purple. It doesn't mean I have to agree with you or ever say, yes, the sky is purple. (laughs) But if we're going to be in this relationship, you need to know that I understand that your sky is purple. And I get that. And that it's safe for that to be the truth for you, right? That's safe. So to me, conflict, I don't know how people really get to very deep, significant intimacy in their relationship without it. Like, you know, it's it to me, it's such a obvious vehicle to that place is to learn how to do conflict well so that we're always deepening using conflict right as an opportunity to deepen those relationships and and get to know one another better and actually build safety right every time you do conflict well you're building a safer 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 space for that relationship because the trust grows the more you do that and you do that well that's that's good stuff (laughs) (laughs) i love it so The natural lay over there is that strengths, because of what we already talked about with strengths, like how it can help people manage some of the emotional reactivity that goes on. It's a it's a beautiful tool to come in and and help people process conflict in a way that might be safer, right, might feel less reactive and and less negative and less defensive and attacky and you know all of this mm-hmm. all of those things that we can tend to do so easily and it gives us a little bit of a language to understand our reflection in the mirror doesn't it oh for sure yeah that's a huge part right because you can't you can't have that mirror conversation with yourself about yourself if you have no understanding of yourself right and so yes. strengths does the self awareness piece first like before you even get to trying to understand your partner um, it you know gives a whole new capacity to self-awareness right. as well and and language for it too not just your own internal understanding but a way to talk about it yes yeah the framework mm-hmm. and the language and mm-hmm. then others can understand it through you know educating themselves on the strengths language absolutely and you know i'm yes as you're speaking i'm thinking of real life examples of not only myself and in, in relationships that i've been in my boss, right? Mm-hmm. The relationship mm-hmm. I've had with my boss about my maximizer that really wants to do a great job, my responsibility number mm-hmm. six, who uh, that wants to take on everything that Too I become much. aware of, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> and trying to process that to improve my performance um, or lack of performance, right? In certain areas. And I think about it with my husband and how I am a constant maximizer. I'm wearing my maximizer shirt today, podcast I land. I that. <laughs> I know you can see it. But today I had the maximizer turned up. And, um, you know, that has, it colors everything about me. My motherhood, my, mm-hmm. uh, my, aunt, my business owner side of me, you know, so, and it leaves me many times feeling like, dang, I just killed that workshop I just did you know I leave there with a high but the low part is like 
I'm not good enough. Like, it's not good enough. It needs to be better. I missed this opportunity. Right. Um, there's, there's always a, the bar is set just a little bit higher every single time. So, man, that's a really great framework to think about. Mm-hmm. And it really does. I mean, it really does help people get to that place. Like a, it's, it's a safer path, a less scary path sometimes to that, you know, intimacy place. Um, Have you found that there's any strengths, particular strengths that might lead to either perception issues, I, I don't know, like, or, or conflict or avoiding it or, you know, obviously mm-hmm. harmony. We talked about harmony, yeah. avoiding conflict. I can see how every strength can get into conflict. Or Absolutely. Being yeah. They all itself. have their shadow side. Yes. Um, I think that depending, I mean, as you well know, every strength shows up a little differently for everybody, depending on what their whole picture is, right. you know, of their top group. And, yes. and so sometimes, but it is actually a, it is a lens into why people might be resistant to conflict, right? Strengths can often, you know, you can look at someone's top group and and sort of understand, oh, if conflict represents this for you, like if the meaning that you make of conflict is X, ah, then I can see how your strengths make you want to run in the other direction. And so sometimes the personal development side for people is, is unpacking that for them and having them understand, oh, okay, conflict isn't the big bad monster that I think it is yes. <laughs> um, and we can figure out a way to to do it and have it be productive so yeah I, I think I'll, I think every strength can get in the way I mean I've I've sure seen most of them <laughs> and, I, and I see some kind yeah, of problems. you're right yeah. you're absolutely and as a coach I know that to be mm-hmm, true myself yeah. and I can see you're deliberative in action right now yeah. that you're not going to point out any strength <laughs> <laughs> to get anybody yeah. feeling and, and you know what I will let you do that because I don't want anybody leaving our podcast feeling like, well, oh, I, my I spouse will say has this. that strength. No, here's an interesting thing that's not going to point at any one person. Okay. But okay. we were doing a class one time and someone asked Ron about the the least common, right? What's the most common and least common mm-hmm. strength? And his answer to the least common strength was? Command. Oh, Oh, well, it's changed. Empathy. Oh, has it changed? It was in 2009 or eight or something. Yeah. We had at the list that said empathy, empathy. was the number one. So that was the one. answer he mm-hmm. gave. And I'd never heard him answer that question before, so I'd never heard that. And I was shocked mm-hmm. because learner and input over here, I had been putting all of my people who had taken the strengths assessment into a spreadsheet. So I had every client that I had ever had in a spreadsheet so that I could look at the data and see like what was coming up. Yes. And Empathy was in the top three across the board, right? Mm-hmm. And I thought, how can that be true? Okay, wait. It's it's just coming to me. Empathy was the last strength at Rackspace. So we had the database uh-huh. of all rackers. Of all the rackers, yeah. And of all rackers, uh-huh. empathy was, was number, number 34. 34. So well, there I think we go. It's That's in the, the bottom. Right. It's in the bottom it, globally, though, too. I think because... Yes, it, it was at the Here, time. I'll it be really honest. Time. I didn't believe him, so okay. I went and looked it up myself. Okay. Yes, it was. <laughs> it's not and a it dominant was, strength. You're it right. was somewhere in the bottom. Yes. And I felt really surprised by that just because my own, mm-hmm. you know, little teeny tiny piece of pie of data had it. Your control group had, had it. it. so high, like very high. Um, so I started asking people who had it that, what they thought about it and how it showed up for them, right, and realized how much the natural inclination of people with empathy gets in the way because it's so you're you're so pre destined to be a pleaser and to be so other focused Mm -hmm. that you very easily lose sight of what you need and what's going on for you and of course where do people like that eventually wind up when they burn out or you know they wind up in therapy 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 office right (laughs) um so it was a that was an interesting uh, sort of counter where the numbers were counter to the quote unquote general population, um, where I thought, oh yeah, okay. So there's a strength that has a particular propensity to a pathway. If you don't, you know, if you don't learn to manage it right, and and get a handle on that. I can totally see that. You know, I, I was sitting in a, I was facilitating a workshop one time at the end of the workshop, I asked for a, a, this is at Rackspace back Mm -hmm. in the day. I asked for some feedback about, you know, we just spent four hours talking about our strengths. Tell me your aha moments class. And one of the gentlemen in the class raised his hand and said, now that I see that empathy is in my bottom five, now I understand why I should 
why we got divorced. And I was like, what? (laughs) Don't go there. And he said, of course, I'm not going to be able to just know what she's thinking. Empathy's at the bottom. And I was thinking, oh, Oh, no, no. (laughs) I wish I could retract my my yeah, request for right. the comments because there's <laughs> certainly no other way to possibly exactly get that information right? other than having empathy <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny oh i thought you're gonna need, I, I, I put a little tick mark next to his name he's gonna need more strengths coaching <laughs> all right oh that's really good help our listeners understand it let's say that we have convinced them through our podcast that they need to have a strength-based relationship okay. with their partner what are some tips they should follow or what's what should they do to get started what's the call to action here on starting out on a strength-based relationship sure yeah that's a great question um well first i think is pretty obvious and most people would know you have to learn what they are right so if you don't if you haven't taken the assessment you don't have your report you want to do that and i would do you do top five or do you do full 34? I let people choose. I okay, say I it can, is expensive. I can work with your top five, but if you want the full report, go for it because then we can, you know, open up the conversation a little further. Mm-hmm. Um, but top five is certainly enough. And I think for anybody who wants to just sort of like put their toe into this and see about it, it's a great, you know, that's a great place to start. Um, I suggest that people read their report and read the long descriptions alone first because our strengths look different to the people (laughs) in our lives who know us well enough to really know them, but they're seeing it through their own lens. Mm -hmm. So I like for people to get their own idea and sense of their strengths for themselves first before they hear feedback from their partner. Um, But then of course that would be the next step is go through your report, read it, learn about it, see what you think, and then have a conversation with um, each other where you just go through your, You go through your five and here's what it says and here's what I think about it. What do you think about it, right? And you just do that for each one. Very similar to one of the exercises we did in our class. Yes. Um, I think after that, I always felt like the report and the conversation about the top five is the tip of the iceberg. It's just the start, right? Now you've got some tools, but then you have to figure out what to do with them. And so finding vehicles and opportunities in your relationship to continue that conversation. I mean, I made a joke about my question, you know, to my husband, like, what strength is that that makes you do that? (laughs) But that's actually a really good habit to get into if we're going to continue to learn and gather information about our partner's behaviors or our own behaviors, right? Because honestly, when I ask him that question, it's probably something he didn't even notice that he he was was doing doing, or hadn't really put a lot of thought behind. And so it's also an opportunity for them to gain a little introspection and gain a little self-awareness. So trying to figure out a way to make it a thread in your just daily life, like where it comes up. I mean, your story about laying sod, like there's strengths right there. Like Mm -hmm. they're always there. (laughs) So it's finding those opportunities to um, talk about them. And then we also um, suggested for people that – If they could get into the habit of stopping and just taking a moment before you do any big project, right? If you're going to plan a vacation, you're going to sit down and figure out the budget for the year, you're going to make a big parenting decision, whatever, something that merits a, we need to have a conversation. If you could just add a couple minutes before you do that to just think about your strengths, my strengths. How are those maybe going to influence this conversation and what we each think the outcome should be or or want and even how we go about solving this problem? Uh, I think I think that lends itself at a, you know, a fairly high level uh, to just aiming those strengths in your actual everyday opportunities and work. So, yes. And, you know, when I think about catching people using their strengths, Mm -hmm. that's the word my head is like catch people Mm -hmm. using their strengths. Uh, positively positive yeah. <laughs> that's exactly my last comment <laughs> yes. was that um i can see myself following that your your advice to the t but not necessarily catching it mm-hmm. in a positive in a light positive way. even in myself sometimes where i am looking at my own strengths mm-hmm. in a negative light versus a positive light so remembering to put the positive on it yeah. what do we appreciate about this strength mm-hmm. what's the value and the contribution that this strength adds to our relationship the work that we do together mm-hmm really helps us have that um it makes it a positive psychology mm-hmm. thing yes. yeah, versus it does. the negative yeah which fits into the strengths obviously their whole um philosophy and and i would encourage people too to think about the positive 
as a balance. Like just because there are some of even my own, you know, of Ron's strengths that I think on a day-to-day basis could be irritating just because they're so different. You know, we are so different. It's nice to have the balance of, yeah, sometimes that irritates me, but sometimes it comes in handy and I lean on that and appreciate it. And I need to make sure I'm paying attention to both parts of that, not just the part that's, that's irritating. Absolutely. Um, I, yeah. I say in my uh, workshops and, and work, working teams all the time, and it's true in our, ro- our relationships, what may fascinate a person from afar mm-hmm, tends mm-hmm. to frustrate them yes. up close. Yes. And I can think of, you know, that whenever I was attracted to my own husband in college, mm-hmm. um, from afar, when he was just a, you know, a, right. a person so I knew, different. Yeah. he was the most laid back, <laughs> fun loving, kind, um, part, like, you know, like the go with the flow guy. And I loved it about him. Mm-hmm. And now that it's in my space and my right. strategic and you're having to maximum, deal with it, yeah. <laughs> what has to go on vacation with it, you know, I want to mm-hmm. get stuff done. I want to yeah. go, you know, I, it's suddenly frustrating to me, but I have to remember like, that's the thing that attracted to me in the first place. Right. The fascination turns into frustration. Yeah. So I have opposites to work it. attract have and to then it. attack. <laughs> That's a great way to end this. That's like a little, that's a therapist, a marriage therapist joke, isn't it? It is. <laughs> oh, Jen, thanks so much. Will you stick around? Let's talk some strength based parenting. Absolutely. Awesome. You know, I'll talk about strength. Yay. Okay. Obey Your Strengths is produced by Geek Day Media in association with Game Day Media Enterprises. Executive produced by Lorenzo Gomez, John Garcia, and Michael Largent. To learn more about Kathy Kirsten, visit her website, kathykirsten.com. That's K-A-T-H-Y-K-E-R-S-T-E-N dot com.